All right, so listen, uh, before I get started, the IBM booth is 321. Drop by there, get a free copy of my latest big data book, but more importantly, join our latest contest. It's a big data project for social good. Um, I'll just, I won't go through my bio. Look, I write and talk a lot about big data. Follow me on Twitter at big data underscore Paul Z. What I will start you with is the IBM pictorial view of big data. So I know what you're thinking. This guy just put up a picture of a mainframe DBA, right? And so I step back from that, right? And I think, no, that's not what I'm doing here. We're talking about a gold miner. And this particular gold miner, the gold is obvious, the value is understood, and I invest in that. And today in the gold mining industry, there's new capital equipment, think Hadoop, right? Which can go through millions of tons of low value per byte data, the dirt, to find near invisible strands of gold, high value per byte data. And what's more is they're actually working on chemical rinses that will find finer granularizations of gold in the dirt that they mine today that they can't see today that they'll be able to see tomorrow. And I think it likes like analytics. And the point of this picture is to say the environment in which we'll do analytics is polyglot. It is not a J.R. Tolkien's one ring to rule them all. We'll have no SQL. We'll have SQL. We'll have Hadoop. We'll have Object Store. And we have to deliver to you folks APIs, visualizations, integration services that allow me to go across this entire ecosystem. So if I'm here three years ago, I'm on stage saying, we're spending money to save money. And that's the initial Hadoop use case, right? But today it's different, folks. It's really about spending money to make money. And, you know, we partner with GM as a great example. They're boosting the projects, the ROI, and the agility of IT by spending money to make money. And so if we all agree that analytics can be a game changer, then we have to agree on this. That big data without analytics, it's just a bunch of data. So analytics is key, to is key, key, key. And we have to distribute the data to do the analytics. And you hear about data lakes and like the new natural resource of data. So let's pretend it's water, right? Well, here's the sad thing right now. 70% of a data scientist's time is spent integrating and cleaning up the data for them to do what they're great at. And so one of the things we've done at IBM is introduce this uh, DataWorks platform. It's a ground to cloud service oriented platform that allows you to refine data and deliver it across the ecosystem because big data without analytics is just a bunch of data. And so if I'm a SaaS modeler, an SPSS, an R person, I just want to drink the raw data from the garden hose, right? So be careful maybe of uh, lead poisoning there, right? Um, but of course the refinement that goes through the water that you take a shower with is less refined than the data that, or the water that you refine to drink. And so the data will be in the same manner. So we have to distribute this across that enterprise. And underneath that, we need to drive analytics now that we distribute the data. And so the neat thing about our big insights for Hadoop distribution that we have is the analytics, the intent focus, unapologetic focus on analytics. And these are three of my favorite of many. One of them is the text analytics toolkit. I'm gonna show you a live demo of it in a bit. It's really a declarative SQL-like language, built-in optimizer and IDE to compose text extractions. You think about analytics and you think about machine learning, yet another declarative SQL or R-like language and the R API. And we spread that across that entire gold mining analogy, right? So I don't care whether you're analyzing data in RDBMS, HDFS, or Access. You can take these skills and analyze the data. And one of my favorite pieces is what I think is the first, if not most sophisticated, native matching engine called Big Match. It's a probabilistic matching engine. It can process millions of tons or millions of rows and seconds. And in fact, we have a client here with 90% accuracy that is matching their clients to their system of engagement profiles on Twitter. And finally, what is the biggest trend in the NoSQL world? It's SQL. So we have the most sophisticated SQL MPP engine out there, the best ANSI compliant coverage. Heck, the thing even runs Oracle PL SQL. So my whole discussion and all the talks mostly are about analytics of data at rest, and we want to get to analytics to data in motion, right? We want to go from a forecast to a nowcast. So here, Dirk, if you run this for me, we built some extractors that are going to live go to Twitter, and just pause that for me, Dirk, and extract intent to get a coffee, to get a massage, a car, a tattoo. So I can see here someone's trying to buy a camera, someone's tired of their Blackberry, someone wants a Blackberry, they're probably from Canada. So go and jump into the micro segmentation information dirt. And here I'm gonna use my big match to go and, let's do tattoos, do we have that there? To go and extract from system of engagement and master system of record. So we go and we run this, 
run one more little thing here. And where are we getting tattoos and tents? New York, there's 30. Look, at that's Texas leading the nation in tattoo and tents. But let me show you one last thing. Look at what I'm pulling out from the attributes. Tattoos by interest. People who want tattoos, they're interested in food and sports. And as a job, what do they do? Education. Who's the big one? Look at IT is getting inked up with tattoos. So listen, come by to booth 321. We got the answers to the questions and how we did that. We do not have free tattoos, but we hope we'll see you there. Thank you very much.